Duke is hosting yet another big man. A transfer portal target is set to be inside Cameron Indoor Stadium with John Shire and his staff today. Who is it? We'll tell you all about it on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on this Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. Hope that you're doing well. Thank you again for your support here of Lockdown Blue Devils. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to our podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five star rating and written review. Watch us each and every day on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel. Comment on these videos. Let's have that conversation going at all times about Duke basketball. It's fun to interact with all of you in the comment section down below. Thanks for your support here of Lockdown Blue Devils. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. And I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. On today's show, we're going to talk about the transfer portal target, Ernest Uday Jr., the Kansas big man, originally from Orlando, Florida, that is visiting John Shire and company at Cameron Indoor Stadium. He entered the portal right before that May 11th deadline, and we'll talk about his impact on Duke's squad next season should he commit, and we'll do that throughout today's show. Joining me on the program today is my good pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. And Kevin, we're talking Duke basketball, what the roster could look like next year. We've been talking about that transfer portal deadline. It has finally come and gone, and we were curious – if there would be one or two scholarships available for Duke basketball. And given Jeremy Roach's decision ultimately to come back for his senior season, we now know that it's that one scholarship that Duke basketball has left to play with. Duke has one scholarship. It's going to go uh, to a transfer big man. Who is it going to be? I guess we'll find out shortly. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's pretty funny that it, it comes to fruition um, basically right at the deadline. We talk about Aziz Bandigo last week as a potential possibility, the transfer from Utah Valley State. We mentioned uh, the one-time transfer rule that was already in place. He had transferred before, so a waiver has to be factored in. We haven't heard as much about his name attached to Duke there lately. This past week, we saw Duke in the transfer portal uh, get a commitment from a Stanford big man who was deeper on the bench. Neil Begovic was his name and uh, he'll be joining Duke basketball for this upcoming season. Just, again, a, a depth piece, not going to go on scholarship more than likely. But uh, nonetheless, those are the type of players you're looking to build out your roster when you look at someone like Kale Catchings and Max Johns from last year's team. Yeah, you're not going to see Bogovic, um on the floor much, if at all. Um, I think he only averaged five minutes per game for his career at Stanford. Um, he's a player that um, plays basketball is coming to Duke um, to solidify his academic requirements and his future endeavors. Um, and just so happens that he plays basketball and there's open walk-on spots that he can come and join the team and, and do that. But yeah, don't expect to see him on the floor much at all. And like you said, he's not even going to be on scholarship. He's going to be, um, I guess, quote unquote, a preferred walk-on. Uh, six foot nine, two thirty, originally out of San Francisco, California. So did want to give Neil Bogovich some love. He is a part of the brotherhood. We love all those guys. Uh, that come and factor into Duke, and they do have a value inside practice, I'm sure, as the coaches will quickly tell you. He's been playing at a Power 5 level for quite some time, and uh, we've done it for the third straight year. Duke and North Carolina, the finest of rivals in college basketball, are able to somehow, some way, go to the same school and get someone out of the transfer portal. How wild is this? Let's go back two years ago from Marquette, Theo John, goes to Duke, Dawson Garcia goes to North Carolina. This past year, we had from Northwestern, Ryan Young go to Duke, Pete Nance go to North Carolina, and now Stanford. 
Bogovich is going to Duke and Harrison Ingram, who will have a big impact for North Carolina next year. Both played at Stanford a season ago. I don't know how we've gotten into this trend, Kevin, but it's really fascinating. Listen, I guess I did know that, but I didn't know <laughs> that that now that you uh, connect my the dots, man. That. Yeah, <laughs> Dawson Garcia, man, that was uh, wow. Like I, I obviously we we've talked about a little bit on your show about my coverage of of the Big East as well, and I mean I remember his freshman year at Marquette, but um, things certainly didn't shake out well for him at Carolina. So that was a name. I forgot and haven't heard of in quite a while. Um, so yeah, Dawson, Dawson Garcia. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Bringing up, bringing up some, some old memories for Yeah, me. There we go. There we go. All right. So let's talk Ernest Udo jr. Though. That's what people have tuned in to hear us talk about from Kansas. We'll get into his numbers after our first time out here on the program. Uh, but before that, Kevin, again, just reiterate with Mark Williams, two seasons ago, his ability to protect the rim, a big time interior presence, ends up being a first round draft pick. Derek Lively, the second, was sensational on the defensive end of the floor. He's declaring for the draft. He's going to stay in the draft. Uh, there is this big need for Duke to potentially go out there and find a five. Yeah, it's a rim protecting five to, to be more specific because I guess they do have that five in Kyle Filipowski if they wanted to or Ryan Young, but neither are those true rim protectors mentioned um, Bandigo um, and, and yeah, the, the biggest reason why Duke is um, not pursuing him as aggressive is um, they don't think he can get that waiver and be immediately eligible. So, so that's the reason why you haven't heard much about him other than um, the, the interest right away. And why wouldn't you for a guy about seven foot and can block just about anything at the rim. That's why they, they don't have as much interest in him, but yeah, the, the, there's a significant need for Duke um, for a rim protecting center that really can start because um, you prefer Ryan Young to come off the bench. So let's talk about this new transfer potentially for Duke. Let's take an official visit to take uh, to chat with John Shire to see Cameron Indoor Stadium to be on the campus of Duke University, and we'll do that after our first time out here on today's show. Lockdown Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugars and calories? Then I've got to tell you about the best tasting protein bar out there ever. It's Built. You've got to try this. If you're like me and you want healthier snack options but you don't want to compromise on taste, I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Bar Puffs. They're healthy and they taste amazing. They taste so amazing you won't think that they're good for you while you're eating them. What makes them great is that they're covered in 100% Real chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and my favorite, cookies and cream. 13 cal or 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. The macros there are amazing. Let me say that again. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Make Built Bar a part of your life. You can order online at Built.com or they're now available at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. And again, you can get those specialty flavors online at Built.com. Built Bar is a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils here today. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. Kevin, I got to ask you, man, tell me a little bit about the website. What do you got going on there at BallDurham.com? We got a ton of coverage at Ball Durham. Um, obviously, Transfer Portal News, the Jeremy Roach News were all over and the impact and uh, I guess the expectations Duke has um, coming out of that news, obviously NBA playoffs, Jason Tatum in the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. And then we're on top of uh, NCAA tournament spring sport action as well, men's lacrosse, softball, and then baseball, NCAA tournament, and ACC tournament get underway in a couple of weeks. Really excited to continue to follow your coverage, the great work that you do there covering everything in the Duke Athletics world. But as you know, people love clicks and they love reading everything that there is and listening to us chat about Duke men's basketball specifically. John Shire and his coaching staff, they're pretty good at that recruiting thing, Kevin. <laughs> uh, but we're just a few seasons into the transfer portal dynamic of this. They've got Theo John and Ryan Young, as we've mentioned in recent seasons that have come over and made an impact. Jacob Grandison from last year inside that Big Ten Conference, transferring into play for Duke. And now we've got a new transfer portal target on campus 
here today in Durham. According to several reports out there, this is happening. What can you tell us about the Kansas transfer, Ernest Uday Jr.? Well, he didn't play that much for Kansas, and it was pretty interesting um, when he entered the transfer portal. Everybody was under the assumption that it's because Kansas had already added Hunter Dickinson, and they were going to add former Duke signee Mackenzie Mbako. And then on Friday night, Mbako announces that he's going to commit to Indiana instead of Kansas, which took a lot of people by surprise. A lot of people perceived that Kansas was the favorite ahead of Indiana. He was also looking at St. John's and Louisville. Um so it's 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 interesting. And now Duke immediately right in the mix, six foot eleven, two hundred and fifty pounds going into a sophomore season, a former McDonald McDonald's All American. And we've already seen the work um that Chris Carrowell and Emil Jefferson do with the big man at Duke. And it is certainly um he's a project. I would say that. I think he's a project that needs a lot of coaching. But you see some of the numbers right there um in just eight point three minutes a game. Um, a little bit under three points, about two rebounds, and just under um, a block a game. So with some extended minutes, he could be a really impactful force for this Duke team. Yeah, well, it's so interesting. Again, we're looking at that center position. And I do want to also point out what we've seen um, in our comments below, what you've seen, obviously, on Twitter and your work and your stories, Kevin. People are quick to point out that Christian Reeves is coming back for his sophomore season, right? He did not enter – the transfer portal prior to that deadline on May 11th, when some people thought maybe he would. Christian Reeves only played in 13 games for Duke, and there is still that possibility that he does improve and that he does make much more of an impact on next year's team. Let me get that out of the way. I do agree with some of the comments that we're seeing down below. The difference that we're seeing here in Ernest Uday is that, yes, While you look at these numbers on the screen, if you're watching us here on YouTube, they're not sensational by any means. But what you do notice is that for a coach like Bill Self, who knows a thing or two about championship basketball and winning at the highest of levels in the sport, he brought this guy into 30 games and he was averaging eight minutes per game. So it's not as though we saw him in just garbage time, game after game after game. There were points throughout the year where Uday was more factored into what Kansas was trying to do, and he is more comfortable as a player out there on the floor, right? Is that what you're taking away from this? Yeah, absolutely. And and obviously these numbers aren't the end-all, be-all. If you look at his numbers per 40 minutes, um, 12.4 points per game, 8.5 rebounds, um, 3.2 steals, and 2.9 blocks per game. Now, obviously that just goes off of the numbers he already put up and just extends it out should he have played 40 minutes in a given game. Also, you look at that, and he averages 7.7 fouls per 40 minutes. Um, So those numbers shouldn't be the end-all, be-all, but it also should tell you um, what he – the ability he has um, should he be on the court for extended minutes. So let's see what it looks like if he does decide to come and play at Duke. If he's looking for a larger role because, you know, as you mentioned, Kansas brings in Hunter Dickinson – from Michigan, and and then therefore Uday makes the decision at the last minute, the 11th hour, to enter the transfer portal. I don't know that he's going to be uh, over the top thrilled with the opportunity that could be there in terms of an offensive game, right? Because I I would imagine it truly is from the Duke perspective, if we're looking at this, knowing that we've got four starters coming back, knowing that we've got offensive weapons as well coming back uh, on next year's squad in the freshman class, Look, defense is probably more so in rebounding the impact that Duke is looking for on next year's team. Yeah, because you're looking for him to fill Derek Lively's role, right? And we saw Lively with his rebounding and his block shots and his defense around the rim. Now, again, I think Duke's going to be a very good defensive team next year regardless. They're just looking for that extra rim protection because Mark Mitchell is an outstanding defender. Um, Tyrese Proctor is an outstanding defender that doesn't, that doesn't get talked about as much. Same thing with Jeremy Roach. He can be a very good defender as well. So I think Duke is going to be pretty solid defensively. It's just they want that extra rim-protecting center like Ernest Uday Jr. Um, to help bolster uh, that back line of defense. I'm excited about the possibility of him committing to the Brotherhood. Hopefully, you know, he gets those great feels and wants to do it on the spot. That'd be a win today, Kevin, if by the time we – lay our head down on the pillow tonight if all of a sudden Ernest makes the decision that he does want to play for Duke. A visit is taking place, right? So I would imagine Duke's going to roll out the red carpet. They're going to let him put on the jerseys 
like we've seen before to let him truly get an idea of what he looks like in that Duke basketball uniform. And who knows, maybe this former McDonald's All-American will ultimately decide to transfer to Duke. Yeah, that, that, that's the hope. I think that's the best case scenario. Um, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know the other schools that are interested in him or if there are any visits set up. Um, but yeah, in an ideal world, um, what, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, whenever the visit wraps up, he, he is able to put pen to paper just about and say, uh, I'm going to be a Blue Devil. And then um, our discussion of roster construction is out the window <laughs> until uh, we talk about how the minutes are going to allot up and who's going to start. Uh, if we're looking at Ernest and things to improve on going into next season, that free throw percentage that's on everyone's screen right now, uh, not great, Kevin. Probably do need to put in a little work there for, uh, for Ernest Uday at the free throw line. Yeah, exactly. And uh, those are in um, limited amounts of free throws. <laughs> Um, average about nine percent for people that aren't uh, watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to us, a 40.9 percent free throw shooter. Yeah, I mean, you look at his totals from the free throw line nine of 22. Um, so not great. Um, you'd hope he can improve on that, but um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't deter uh, the Duke <laughs> basketball coaches from trying to bring him in um, just because of the free throw percentage. All right, let's take our last time out here on the program today, and we'll wrap up our conversation with Kevin Connolly when we return here on Locked On Blue Devils. Really do appreciate all of your support here with Locked On Blue Devils. If you're watching us on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot more awesome content coming your way throughout the week as we're going to continue to look at what, in fact, this Duke roster will look like going into next year and beyond. Also want to talk about Duke and the NBA playoffs as we mentioned, Jason Tatum, sensational this past weekend. Steph Curry had the Game 7 scoring record for all of two weeks before Jason Tatum put 51 on the Philadelphia 76ers over the weekend. Tatum on an absolute tear. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more throughout the week on Locked On Blue Devils. Also, make sure you check out Locked On College Basketball with host Isaac Shade and Andy Patton. They talk about everything going on in the world of college hoops. A terrific breakdown of what's going on in the world of college basketball, and it's available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Again, cho go check out Locked On at College Basketball. Fought a few moments here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. If you're just now joining us and if you missed yesterday's show, the big news going into the week is that Jeremy Roach is returning for his fourth season for his senior year playing basketball for the Duke Blue Devils, a captain who led Duke to a Final Four in his uh, in Coach K's final season when Jeremy Roach was a sophomore as a junior this past year, the guard on Duke's ACC tournament winning team. What does Roach's decision to return mean for Duke, Kevin? It means that it's basically Final Four slash National Championship or bust for Duke, in my opinion. Um, we outlined yesterday that uh, it's very difficult to win in this sport. That the, In a Game 7 winner-take-all postseason, it, it's very difficult to win six in a row. Let, let's get that out of the way first. But um, this team basically running it back from last year with four starters returning, um, it, it has to be a banner-type year for Duke um, at their end-of-the-year banquet, putting up ACC tournament, national champion, Final Four-type banners. I hope they could do that. I, I think we saw the graphic go out with uh, Jeremy Roach's post and, and Duke's post as well, stay the course, and we saw the five national championship banners. And uh, how about just the branding, the image that Duke always puts out there, Kevin? Epic, because you look all the way to the far right, and there is a sixth banner slot right there for Duke, and Jeremy Roach is kind of looking up at it, trying to bring home that sixth championship. Yeah, Duke is a, is a championship or bust type program. That's the precedent Coach K set um, for his 40-some-odd years at Duke and winning five national championships. So John Shire, now he has um, the bullseye firmly on his, his back, his team's back, as arguably the best team going into next season. The rotation is going to be something that we're going to continue to talk about, particularly at that guard spot. Proctor and Roach was a dynamic that continued to evolve throughout the season. Roach had the lingering issue and that sort of thing. But I tell you what, you look at this past year when Duke goes into the season with pretty much only Jeremy Roach, who played meaningful minutes, and now at the guard spot alone, not even factoring in Flip and Mark Mitchell, 
But at the guard spot alone, when we're talking about championships and we're talking about winning in March, you talk about that guard position, Kevin, and Duke can turn to number five, Tyrese Proctor, and number three, Jeremy Roach. Yeah, guard, you said it. Guards win in March, right? That's what everyone tells you. Guards win in March. Look at Connecticut from this past year. Guards win in March. Now, obviously, they had two big guys and a couple of wings as well. But point guard play is huge down the stretch. Though the, Those are the guys with the basketball on their hands. And Duke's going to have two of the best in the country in Jeremy Roach and Tyrese Proctor. And uh, not to go too in detail on Caleb Foster and Jared McCain, but if they can provide some outstanding shooting off the bench, the more the better for Duke. Can't wait to see how it all unfolds, and we're going to continue to talk about it throughout the uh, coming days and weeks leading up to this new college basketball season. Kevin, give me one more plug for balldurham.com where people can find all your work. Well, you can find us at balldurham.com. Follow us on Twitter at ball underscore Durham, and basically all the news, opinion, and analysis about Duke and Duke athletics professionally, collegiately, prospects, and recruit recruiting. Um, we got it over there. So give us a read. Give us a follow. Uh, might be biased, but you won't be disappointed. Uh, you've got uh, your own Twitter handle there as well, Kevin Connolly24, to see all your work too. Kevin, certainly do appreciate the time. We'll talk to you again next week, okay? Thanks, JJ. All right, that's Kevin Connolly from Ball Durham joining us here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day. <laughs>